Hey again guys, how are we doing? AJ here, and I have another Ixalan pre-release pack for you. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the pre-release packs, it is what you use to build a deck for the pre-release event. It contains one promo card, rare mythic, and uh, six packs. And you are encouraged to build uh, your deck around those. Well, your your you, know, you, you build the, the deck around the packs, which you get. Uh, generally, the promo is really nice, and you're able to kind of combo with that. Sometimes you just get unlucky. Sometimes, like I, I mean, I I remember in my last two pre-release games I did, I actually did not use the promo pack that I came with, or the promo card. So. Go ahead and set that down right there. That is a piece of paper in the way. Let's go ahead and open it up. We're going to go and get our six packs out of here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at what our... Ooh. So our promo card in this one is going to be the Dream... Ooh. Dream Color Siren. So this is Flying Flash Pirate. Dream Color Siren can block only creatures with flying. When Dreamcaller Siren enters the battlefield, if you control another pirate, tap up to two target non-land permanents. So not bad. I mean, flash, flying, you know, like block flying, but it's also considered a pirate, so it can work with other pirate cards, too. And then just being able to tap it uh, onto the battlefield is really nice. You can just kind of throw it in as a response. So it's pretty much you pay four. Uh, as long as you have another pirate, you can tap up to two more creatures. So not bad at all. And then I usually keep forgetting to show this to people too, but all the fearless ones do come with like these countdown die, which are really cool. Because the hoof, the set symbol right there, which I like because it's like the wheel compass kind of thing. So we're going to go ahead. You're not here to look at the dice. Though if you are, we appreciate dice people as well. But you're here to see the cards. I know you. Alrighty. And I will deliver as best as I can. So I'm is that a Minotaur? I haven't seen a Minotaur character. He's got like a chain whip. It's kind of cool. It's probably a pirate. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and just roll through these right here. Since this is like the third one we've done. If you're unfamiliar with a lot of the cards, I have I do a lot of explanations in the earlier two videos. Skittering Heartstopper. Ixalan Diviner. Now there's something that I do like or that you haven't seen before. I'll go ahead and, and stop and explain. Prosperous Pirates. Like this one right here, Stormfleet Pyromancer. I don't believe I've seen this one before. So this is a 3-2 for 5, so a little pricey, but the raid effect, so you can drop that after you've done combat. When raid Stormfleet Pyromancer enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, Stormfleet Pyromancer deals 2 damage to our creature player. So that's not, I mean, it, it's it's definitely something that you want to just plan ahead for, which is kind of cool. So it's also unexpected, like... You know, you you blocked it. You know, you you attacked. Whoop! Sorry, made my foot. You attack with something. Uh, you know, you you run that risk of. Well, I mean, realistically, you play that second main phase and you didn't spend anything in your first main phase. You essentially can drop down a three two, especially if you lost a creature, uh, and then deal two damage to either creature or player. So, usually, you know, two damage can be the difference between winning a game and losing a game. So, I mean, any card can be good in the right situation. Spreading Rot, <laughs> like this one. Sorcery for five. Destroy target land. Its control loses two life. <laughs> Being able to remove any sort of land is always a good thing. Raptor Companion. Cobble Wings. Spell Pierce. And I'll, I'm going to take a moment. This card, I don't know what it is. Who does the art for the blue cards? But man, they really get it right. That looks so good. I love that, and I will be excited. I, I got, I'm sure a foil one of those would look super pretty. I'm sure that will be like all lit, lit up and foiled. Oh, so good. Territorial Hammer Skull. Inspiring Cleric. I'm going to hand a little bit. Bellowing Aegisaur. So this is a, I haven't talked about this one yet. So this is a, a six drop, so he's a big one. He's a big boy. And he has an enrage effect. When it's dealt damage, put a one on one counter on each other creature you control. Now there are cards, like I'm trying to remember what it was. It was a red one instant where it was actually deal one damage to your creature. Uh, rise or, oh, now I can't remember what it's called. 
Um, but that's exactly what this is used for. Like, this is used for, like, a red-white deck where you just poke it for one, uh, and then everything else gets a 1-1 one, one counter on it. And you can poke it again, and everything gets a 1-1 one, one counter on it. All right. Thundering Spine Back. This is another really good one, too. Speaking of making dinosaurs stronger, uh, so this is a 7-drop 5-5, five, five, but all of the dinosaurs you get plus 1, plus 1, and then you can pay 6 and get a 3-3 three, three dinosaur creature with Trample. And then I ran the pack. Oh no, weird, weird, but uh, I'm not going to complain because we have a foil fire cannon blast. I noticed with some of these Ixalan packs that the foil is usually in front of the rare and then some are behind the rare, so it's a little weird. But that's super cool. I like that. I like how they, they put the detail into the actual detailing of the cannon too with the foil. And then our rare in the pack is, ooh, Vance's Blasting Cannons. So this is a legendary enchantment, and then it also flips because you can tell by this little arrow symbol right here on the bottom. So we'll flip over in just a second. All right. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast that card this turn. So at the beginning, of your, exile the top card of your library. So if it's a non-land, you can, you can cast it this turn. Whenever you cast your third spell... A turn uh, when you when you cast the third spell in it whenever you cast your third spell in a turn so you have to cast three spells in one turn you can flip the blasting cannons which flip into Spitfire Bastion legendary land where you can tap for a red or you can pay two in a red and tap where it deals three damage to target creature or player that's awesome a land that you can just tap to deal damage not bad at all. So and I'll, that's actually really cool art right there. I think that base firing the cannons, that's cool. So that's a pretty good first pack. Legendary land flip with a foil fire cannon blast. Let's see what... and surprisingly, I've not been able to pull a planeswalker yet. So here's hoping that this will be the one that has the Planeswalker. All right, so we have a Dire Fleet Hoarder, Tillinol's Knight, Ravenous Daggertooth, Shaper Apprentice, Ancient Barotodon, Tishana's Wayfinder, Prying Blade, Headstrong Brute, Kinjali's Collar. Well, this is another really fun card that I got to use when I was playing in the pre-release. This is a 0-3 for 1. Dinosaur spells you cast cost 1 less. And yes, it stacks. And yes, it stacks with the other ones, too. Like the Red Priest, that uh, that uncommon red one. Stormfleet Pyromancer. Pillar of Origins. So this is, in, this is one we haven't pulled yet. So it is a 2-drop uncommon uh, artifact. As Pillar of Origins enters uh, the battlefield, choose a creature type. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So that's not bad. If you know what you're playing, it should be easy. Bishop of the Bloodstained. 3-3 three, three for 5. When Bishop of the Bloodstained enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life for each vampire you control. Not bad if you can pump out a bunch, a bunch of little vampires. Air Elemental. So this is just a nice big 4-4 four, four with flying. I mean, it's, you can't go wrong with that. A four, Even if you're paying 5, it's still a 4-4 four, four with flying. Very good to have. And then our rare in the pack is... Oh! Tishana! Voice of Thunder! We got the Merfolk Shaman! They want me to make They want me to make a Merfolk deck. That's what they want me to do. Let's take a... Oh my god, look at the art on this. We're going to zoom it in real fast. So freaking beautiful. Oh my god, I'm playing Merfolks. I'm gonna go Merfolk in this game. So, she is a 7-drop. Tishana, Voice of Thunder's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. When Tishana enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control. Holy crap. That is a beautiful, beautiful card. Oh, no maximum hand size. So good. And then there are other cards that you can do to help boost Merfolk. Like give them hex proof and stuff like that. So you can get her out there and you can get her protected. Uh, and then you just you just look. You, you look at your opponent. That's what I think. 
Oh, so good. So good, so good. I'm excited. All right. That's that's the legendary merfolk <laughs> that uh, a couple people I know that were really excited for. So not a planeswalker, but still very cool. Very, very cool. Skittering Heartstopper. Skyblade of the Legion. Shorekeeper. Ravenous Daggertooth. Jungle Delver. Ancient Brotodom. There, there's the Wayfinder. You found her. She's over here. Prime Blade. Headstrong Brute. Kaja Kinjali's Collar. Makeshift Munitions. All right, what is this? <laughs> All right, so it is an enchantment for two. Pay one sacrifice or artifact or creature. It deals one damage to our creature or player. That's kind of cool. So you can just like throw away some of your chump tokens. That's not bad. Um, I don't know, another merfolk. So, uh, Kuimna Speaker is a 1-1 one, one for 1. So very nice. Gets plus 1, plus 1 as long as you control another merfolk or an island. So very nice. Seeker Squire. This is another really good one too. It is a 1-2 one, two for 2 that explores. And we talked about Explore where you can, you reveal the top card. If it's a land, you put it in your hand. Uh, if it's not, you can either choose to keep it or put them on, put it in your graveyard. Either way, you uh, if, as long as it's not a land, this card right here would get one uh, plus one plus one counter. And then our rare in the pack is Death Gorge Scavenger. Ah, I'm super stoked about that Tishana. That's a beautiful, beautiful card. Oh. I, I've been so excited to make a merfolk deck. I mean, I was I was going in here thinking I was going to do pirates and dinosaurs, and then I just saw all the cool merfolk cards, and I was like, yeah, this is happening. Dire Fleet Hoarder, Dual Shot, Storm Scorm Sculptor, Spike Tailed Ceratops, Prime Blade, Headstrong Brute, Kinjali's Collar, Storm Fleet Pyromancer. Spreading Rot. Get to the Uncommons. Another Wild Growth Walker. Deathless Ancient. This is different. So this is a 4-4 four, four for 6 with Flying. Tap 3. Untap Vampires you control. Or tap 3 Untap Vampires you control. Return Deathless Ancient from the graveyard to your hand. Well, that's not bad. You don't really have to waste anything for it. Especially if you're like making tokens. Emissary of Sunrise. So this is a 2-1 for 3. With first strike and explore, so that's really good too. And then our rare is Sanctum Seeker, creature vampire knight. When a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain a one life. Not bad. Ooh, and we have a foil thrash of raptors. Well, that's kind of cool. Look at the detail on the raptors right there with the foil. I like that a lot. And then we have our other stuff. All right, we have two packs left in this pre-release kit, and I don't care, because I got to show them. All right, so we're going to do this with a, start it off with a Dead Eye Tormentor, Rummaging Goblins, Sunrise Seeker, Ravenous Daggertooth, Shaper Apprentice, Anointed Deacon, Pirate Cutlass, Vanquish the Weak, Jungle Delver, Ancient Brotodon, Sentinel Totem. So let's take a look at this one. So it's a artifact for one. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. Uh, ooh, wow. Wow, that's actually not bad considering there's so many different cards like um, <coughs> Boneyard Parlay and stuff like that that would uh, definitely not benefit from this. Where you can pay, you uh, tap exile sit and total exile all cards from all graveyards. That's really good, actually. A lightning lick rig crew, charging monstrosaur, and then the rare in the pack is Agrath Marauders. All right, so this is one that I've never seen before. So this is a four four for seven. <laughs> If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Wow. I'm not going to complain about that one. That, that just seems really good in a pirate deck where all you're doing is just creating pirates and rushing things down. And then we have our lands. So not bad at all. All right.
right, our last pack. This guy right here is going to have something magical in it. I can feel it. Whether it be something I haven't pulled yet, which hopefully is a good sign. You know, with a new set coming out, there's still a lot of cards I do not have. Uh, so just being able to get things like that would be great. So, Sure Strike, Legion's Judgment, Skittering Heartstopper, Commune with Dinosaurs, Kin Jolly's Caller, Shana's Wayfinder, Encampment Keeper, Cobble Wings, Pounce, Deep Root Waters. Oh, yep, here's the enchantment that I was talking about. Whenever you cast a Murphy spell, create a woman bloomer for token with hexproof. So just be, be just creating more folks with hexproof. Oh, so good, so good, so good. Ruthless Knave. Deadeye Plunderers. And the rare in the pack is... Ooh, Sun Petal Grove. So this is a nice one. I love these dual lands. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest or aura planes. It's not bad at all. Ooh, we have a foil. What do we got? Imperial Lancer. 1-1 one, one for 1. Has double strike as long as you control a dinosaur. That's not bad at all. All right, so we got some really good cards. Uh, I, I'm excited. I can start finally working on my Merfolk deck now that I have a uh, Tishana. So hopefully by the next couple of weeks, I'll have something ready to go. And I just got to see exactly what I want to build around and what other Merfolk cards are out there and stuff like that. Um, so but again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like. Give it, give, give like for Tishana. Tishana. Give like for Tishana. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe as well. We always appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a great night.